we are going to bring you Chloe Fatsis versus Stefan Fatsis in this one. I think both you and I, Matt, are very well aware of this the sparks that can fly when you play a family member in a Scrabble tournament. And so I expect sparks to fly in this one as well. Absolutely. Uh, pull out all the stops. Nothing is off limits when you play your own kin. This one, not sibling versus sibling, but father versus daughter. Stefan, for those less familiar with competitive Scrabble, wrote the book Word Freak, which is responsible for getting hundreds of people, including myself, into the board game of Scrabble and uh, brought his own daughter into the scene as well. We will get to his game right now. All right, we are underway. Chloe looks like gets to go first for the second game in a row. What a luck box. Um, as we are getting started now, Chloe to draw a TV. Some other goodies to go with it. Ooh, this could be very promising. Nope, not quite. A-E-R-R-T-T-V, the rack for Chloe. So vert, avert, two options she could play here. Maybe considers exchanging as well. Um, I don't know. Charles, would you look to play vert or avert here, or would you exchange RT? I, w I like vert here, just V-E-R-T. It sets up your A. A-R-T is quite a good leave. There's probably no reason to exchange here. Um, a, you would probably exchange RTV, keeping A, E, R, T, which is a great leave, but not by no means guaranteed to net you a bingo. Um, might as well take the 14 points, keep A, R, T, slightly, slightly inferior leave, but not 14 points inferior. And it uh, looks like Chloe's going for slightly more points and just tacking the A on right away for a vert. Also a very strong choice. So a vert for 18, the way she's going to start, and vertically, she's now two for two in vertical openings, so very good. A-E-E-E-L-L, -E 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 -L -L, the rack for Stefan. Doesn't even have allele as an out as a, as a bailout from this rack, just a little bit away from that. So this just a hot garbage start to a game that I'm sure Stefan would very much like to win. Uh, of course, it's a long game and anything can happen. Um, leave looks to be his stop, top option here, just L-E-A-V-E -E, through the V, 16 points. That's about all you can do. And the rack's not so bad that you exchange here. Do you see any reason to do anything else in this situation, Charles? Uh, no, it's really got to be that. Um, keeping E-E-L, it's not ideal, but it's... Is basically as good as you're going to do on this rack if you want to score any points at all. So there's there's no reason to pass that play up, assuming that Stefan sees it. It is a it's a normal word, so we would expect him to find that play. It looks like he might be looking to play some defense here. He's looking at L E E stacking, but leave gonna be the play he opts to make here, and we agree in the booth. Solid start uh, for Stefan and Chloe has found some trouble, C-E-O-O-O-R-T. She does have Cooter, C-O-O-T-E-R, playing above leave for 26, but that's a little bit dangerous. That's gonna throw the C right out there and open this board. If she wants to keep things tight, Toko and Cleave, another option for her for 23. And I think that's the one she wants to make. Charles. Would you play Cleave and Toko here? Would you play Cleave and Koo for just 16, holding EORT? Or would you play long with Cooter? I'm, I probably have a bad tendency of just playing long whenever I feel like it. I think it might be some, some desire just to show off six letter words. I'm not sure exactly where it stems from. Um, something like Cooter, which scores really well, keeps a neutral leave of just an O, I'd be very tempted by. And um, I, it's hard for me to quantify exactly how dangerous that C is in the triple line. Um, I probably underestimate how dangerous it could be. So I would be leaning towards Cooter. Then again, putting the C on leave, you get to use that hook right away for a decent score and a decent leave. Um, I'd be kind of split between those two plays. So I, th I like Chloe's play here. Yeah, tough decision, but one that Chloe didn't spend a lot of time on. She really liked this play of Toko, and uh, she's gone ahead and made it. Stefan, still a lot of E's on his rack, D-E-E-E-H-L-N. He's got some nice options. 
Uh, underneath cleave, he can cash in that H in a number of different plays. Healed or heal or heed all play underneath cleave for a bunch of points. Um, I think I like healed the most in this situation. 37 points. Get rid of D E E H L, which are tiles that aren't exactly synergistic. Stefan's got it set up on his rack here as well. Going to take his time and make sure there's nothing better that he's not seeing. Uh, but we don't see it here in the booth. No bingos or anything crazy like that. And uh, Stefan's going to get a nice number of points uh, out of this rack. Yeah, definitely. Uh, most most Scrabble players at any level will immediately hone in on the H going on that triple letter score. And it just so happens that not only can you simply drop the H there, you can drop most of your clunky tiles as well while scoring points. So it really feels like a no-brainer. And Stefan felt the same way, it appears. And not just that, but also knocking out those big back hooks on Cleave, the R, the D, and the S all now uh, much harder to cash in and will be less fruitful typically when you do. So a lot of merit to that play, a lot of good stuff. And Stefan, two for two on making plays we like so far in this game, as Chloe now has another tough rack that she's going to have to work her way out of. Uh, this was looking promising, E-I-O-R-T, and then it went very astray as her last two tiles were W-G. And uh, this is tough now. Uh, just, uh, man, I hate these racks. I hate situations like this. You can play wig to the left side of Toko, making it and go, and setting up you know, front hooks like twig and swig and huge overlaps. You can play G-O-W-D to the D and healed for 18, holding bingo-prone stuff on a board that's not the best for bingos. You can play Godwit or something. I don't know, like nothing looks good for Chloe out of this situation. I think I'm partial to just playing long and making like a, a Godwit type play if I see that here. But what are, what's going through your head right now, Charles? My my first inclination to seeing the letters was, do I have a play through the A of a vert? Like, can I play wage something? Like, wage year is not a word, but that would be a play I would be, you know, looking to try to make. Um, I'd spend a little bit of time thinking about that and then failing to come up with anything. I would have to fall back on some of those. As you described them, Matt, just less enticing options. Something like Godwit, again, my affinity for six-letter words, just throw it down there, open the board a little bit for more spots for bingos. ER is a, a perfectly good leave, and just, you know, try to get to a bingo at, at some point. Yeah, I think I like Godwit here. I don't like how it opens the board necessarily. I, I, I like keeping tight boards tight, but... I think we just need to play off some tiles in this situation. Godwit would be fun because it would be another fun wit word that I've gotten to call on stream. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you may be familiar with the other famous wit word I got to call on stream, as that was in a $10,000 game of Scrabble. I'll let chat uh, deal with the rest of that because I think I might get us uh, banned from YouTube. Yeah, definitely don't get banned from YouTube, Matt, because I, I don't think I can carry this stream by myself. Uh, I think you could. And I guess you could probably call on your brother if needed. You know, y'all could y'all could probably be entertaining together. And, and honestly, if you got banned from YouTube, it's because the whole channel got banned from YouTube. So we might just be kicked off together in that situation. Speaking of the channel, of uh, those of you who are jumping in a little bit later, uh, Let's Play Scrabble does very often put out good Scrabble content, uh, whether it's live streaming tournaments, we're putting together highlight reels, putting together Scrabble skirmishes where they grab people to play and commentate in a rotating fashion. Make sure you've subscribed to this channel if you're interested in watching Scrabble on the internet, or if you just want to do Josh a solid, uh, make sure you check out letsplayscrabble.com, uh, as you see on the bottom of the display here as well. Uh, if you're into Scrabble at all, let's try to grow this game. Let's share these links around. Let's like this video. Let's subscribe. Let's run up that algorithm. As Chloe plays Goud here, she keeps the board tight. Maybe she knows something about her dad's game that we don't. But Goud, the play she's going to make, E-I-R-T. She's really hoping for a bingo into those bingo prone tiles. Otherwise, she's in trouble. What does she pull? There's an A, an O, and a T. 
this will be interesting. I'm not seeing it if it's there. Yeah, I think the that's just one too many vowels for Chloe. I guess it does depend on what her dad opens up for her. If he puts that N out in space, he'll have Tentoria. Um, of course, he doesn't know that. He's really just focused on making his own best play. And in this case, this is something where I would spend a significant amount of time to my own detriment is, do I have a bingo through the T on this rack? It's a high probability set of letters, um, but I would, I would need to spend some time to make sure I'm not missing anything because a bingo through this T would uh, far and away be Stefan's best, best play if it's there. So he has to make sure he's not missing anything. We know from our position that he's not, but he can he can know for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really tough on stream, especially. You do not want to miss a baby bingo on stream, but Stefan, pretty confident he doesn't have one there. He has to play C-L-I-N-E in this situation. I think I liked C-I-N-E just a little bit better because his board is so bad for scoring. And I've just exposed a triple word that's going to make Chloe, uh, it's going to give Chloe some easy scoring options. But at the same time, this scores way better than the other options. So uh, whatever, that's the play Stefan chooses to make. It'll put him ahead 85 to 59. And Chloe did miss a bingo on her E-I-R-T leave, which hurts. She does have erotica through the C for 27, uh, which is a pretty good option here. She's also got nice stacking plays to the right side of Klein, T-O-E or T-O-E-A, jump out as the best two options they are making, G-I-T, and a bunch of other goodies on their way down. Uh, Charles, are you playing erotica through the C? Are you playing as many tiles as you can once again? Or do you think in this situation, maybe we keep things small with a play like Toe? Uh, I honestly might split the difference here. I might do something like 8, A-T-E, to the right of Klein. It, it mostly blocks the triple, and it also sort of uses up that nice double word score that's sitting there next to GI. Um, the, the leave isn't as good, clearly, and there's been a lot of E's played, so you might value your E tile slightly more here than you would normally. Um, but if she wants to do sort of both things at once, she could do that. Um, otherwise, I might be tempted just to play coat, uh, very basic play from the C incline and just go for another bingo keeping EIRT. Yeah, th these turns are tough. You know, do I do I blow up the bingo prone stuff or not? Uh, Chloe's going to opt to play aortic here. I do like holding on to the E uh, already five or uh, only five left in the bag already at this stage in the game. So not too many more to be drawn. And I do like holding on to the E. She'll play aortic. Um, I like this idea. So aortic to play. 24 points for Chloe. She's now down just two, although her dad has found the first blank in this bag, and that is going to make things very interesting. The blank giving Stefan a 70-point play this turn, a 70-point non-bingo. Uh, so that is something he's going to have to think about. That play is FedEx, burning the blank as an E, making G-I-F-O-N-E and W-E-D 70 points. Um, he can also score that X in a number of other places. Fax beneath Aortic is 32. Fed over to the right side of Klein, a bunch of points as well. These are so hard to decide. Do I cash the blank now or do I hold on to it? 70 is so many points. But DEO blank after scoring Fax for 32, like how can that go wrong? That seems awesome too. What are you thinking about doing here, Charles? What do you like to do if you're Stefan? Um, I would be thinking, of, certainly my first thought would be get the bingo type score with FedEx. That's just um, too many points uh, to pass up in a lot of situations. He it looks like he, he might have been starting to play it, but just stops with Fed, which um, does keep the X. The X isn't doing anything spectacular on this board, and it will hinder his bingo chances. But maybe he's thinking the long game. Maybe he's thinking score big with Fed, Cash in the X next turn and then bingo. So a, a three tiles or a three play sequence of sort of escalating scores. So I, I guess I, I see where he might be going with this, and I kind of like that idea. Oh, this is nuts. I think Chloe's going to play at Tui, E T U I, through the T and Toko on this turn. And if she does, 
depending on what Stefan draws, if he picks up an I, he's going to crush that X and then bingo next turn. So we'll see what Chloe does, but if she does put down ETUI, which looks to be an equity play, she might get smacked. Nope, Stefan has missed the I. So uh, that would be an interesting sequence, but one that wouldn't hurt as bad. Yeah, I think that's exactly what Stefan was hoping for. Um, just some some crazy extended sequence of plays that would put this game out of reach. Um, he's still in good shape, though, holding the X in the blank and with Chloe clearly not doing much on her turn. Um, it's looking good for Stefan currently, but there's a lot of game left to be played. There's a lot of game left to be played. There's a lot of lines that are pesky that aren't going to go away. The Weds spot um, playing on the left side of Toko or that last O in Toko, th those spots aren't going away anytime soon. So I think we're just going to kind of race to a bingo in each of them uh, if we can draw one at all. But there's a lot of goodies left in the bag, two unseen blanks to Chloe. Uh, th there's a lot of stuff. So I think we'll see some fireworks yet, and it's just a matter of who pulls them and when. All right, so perhaps because of the unseen X and the unseen Q, Chloe is not playing at Twee, but rather Ute holding E-I-N-O-T. She's looking to dodge vowels, and she hasn't done it. A-I the pull. That is killer for her, as once again, she's going to score very little. And her dad retaining that X last turn uh, is going to try to catch it in this turn. Mux plays above the U in Ute. It is 33. It opens the board up for high-scoring bingos when you have a blank on your rack. But Chloe has also just played UTE through a T for six. You have to have her pegged on very bingo-prone tiles as well. That's an aggressive move to open this triple-triple. Charles, would you do it? Uh, given that Stefan knows that his daughter is very strong on bingo knowledge and that she would not make a play like Hughes unless she was keeping very well, um, I'd be surprised if he opened up a triple here. And yeah, we see him opting for the safer, safer positioning, which makes complete sense uh, given what he can infer from Chloe's play. Yeah, I, I agree. This makes complete sense. 29 points. Um, no reason to get crazy, crazy aggressive when the deck is stacked in your favor as it currently stands. So OTU blank to leave for Stefan. And like Chloe, he's looking to dodge drawing vowels here. That play of MAX does give Chloe a very easy play out of this rack, RIA. And she identifies right away, I've got to do this, and throws it down before Stefan has even revealed his draw. So time back on Stefan, Chloe trying to bingo, and she'll pull two more vowels. I would That's have punched rough. them already. I, I hate holding one point leaves like EIRT, EINT, and drawing more vowels into them. Nothing stalls a game out more than doing that. And Chloe just keeps drawing them. Ugh. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is such a, a gut punch, like multiple turns in a row to just completely draw the opposite of what you're going for. Not even gen like generic or neutral value tiles, but the things that are actively hindering you to have that happen on multiple. I wouldn't call these fishes necessarily, but they were, they're basically pseudo fishes. And to have it go wrong, you know, multiple multiple turns in a row is just so annoying. Right. And, and it's not like the lines aren't there. There are several bingo lines on this board. You've got a floating central D that you can use anywhere in that word, and you're just not drawing it. But uh, Chloe will eventually get her way out of this. She just looks like she's staring into a blank void right now, and that's exactly where my mind would be, too, after drawing, like, six vowels in a row or something. Uh, Stefan SSQ, his three-tile pull into OTU blank. Uh, no bingos out of this rack, and I just, my brain would be exploding right now if I were in his situation. I, I guess you have to play SUQ and G-O-W-D-S, right? Like, I don't think there's anything else to do. I expect to see Stefan spend some time on this turn to make sure there's not some nutso bingo that he's missing out on, but we know it's not there. And I don't see anything except Souk in this situation. Charles, do you see any reason to burn a blank or to exchange, or you just drop SUQ and get on with it? Yeah, unless I'm missing something, no standout Q plays that would justify burning the blank. You've got the two S's, so you might as well burn one with Souk, and you've got a spot for it for a pretty good score. 
and keeping keeping back an S and a blank. Um, it's kind of what he was hoping to do with the X and the blank, um, but now it's the Q and the blank. He can cash in the Q here for a pretty good score, all things considered. Try to bingo next turn and um, maybe put this game away if he can draw something good. So SUQ, 32 points, OST blank. As Stefan sneaks ever closer to bingo range, he's probably 80, 85% to bingo next turn after that play, if I had to guess. If we go back to Chloe and her infinite consonant draws, or sorry, infinite vowel draws. Yeah, she's hoping for infinite consonant draws, but that's not what she's getting. Careful what you wish for. Quackle's got Stefan at 76% to bingo next turn. And it looks like he has picked up some of those. So he'll, he'll be getting his down. I wonder if he's got one from the queue. I don't see that. Oh, that yeah, that would be cool. Like uh, some qu quoth ours or uh, right. can't come up with one. He's, he's not going to phony like that. So Knight, uh, 29 points. Chloe just says, you know what, forget it. I need points. I've stalled out the last two turns, Ute and Raya. I'm scoring 29, and I think this is absolutely the right thing to do. So N-I-T-E, 29 points. E-I-O, we'll see if she finds even more vowels here. E-T-I, and man, is that the that same? That looks familiar. She, she literally just drew E-I-N-T after playing E-I-N-T. I don't think Chloe's drawn a letter that scores not one point in like <laughs> a very long time. Um, geez. She, she's got to be really annoyed right now with this bingo coming down. It's like, I mean, it being a family member notwithstanding, this has just been a, a brutal series of draws for Chloe. Right, right. I think Chloe definitely has the the set, though, in this family matchup. She's won significantly more, but Stefan, I, I'm sure, would love to have this one. Cat House, 92 points. Places that H right there on the double letter play, uh, double double letter square, uh, does not get any better than that, and it keeps this board tight. So Stefan's got to be feeling very good as Chloe stares at the same rack once again, and she's not going to be able to score uh, twenty nine points out of it this time. Ugh, this has been painful to watch. Yeah, I'm not seeing. I don't see a play that scores more than like five points here. I, I literally don't see a play that she can make that scores any points whatsoever. <laughs> you play O-I and U-N-I for five? Do you play Union for five? Like, this is killer. This is... I'm in pain right now. Yeah, I think this is the the worst combination of board and rack that I've ever seen, where the, the highest scoring play is worth five. Like, that, that is, like, almost unheard of. I wouldn't even say almost unheard of. That's completely unheard of. This is so painful. Maybe you just exchange three. Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you exchange more than three and try to get an S or a blank. You need to hit averts pretty soon. Oh my goodness. It's just painful. Yeah. This, uh, this is not, not especially fun to watch, but, um, when you're streaming and commentating and watching Scrabble, you take the good with the bad. And for Chloe, this is far swung on the pendulum of goodness to the bad side. Yeah, this is killer. But, you know, she, she pulled both blanks in the first, like, four turns last game and drew every power tile or whatever. Like, Scrabble giveth and Scrabble taketh away. But, man, this has been killer. She's going to exchange three. I think I would, too. Just, like, I, I don't even know at this point. You just kind of start praying you get to 250 points in a situation like this. Like, please, there's got to be a bingo somewhere in this bag on a board with this many bingo lines. So we'll, we'll see what she draws. B, S, S. Uh, B, S, definitely, I think, Chloe's thoughts on some of her pulls this game as well. So exchange three yields two S's for Chloe, and we're back on Stefan's turn now. And uh, Stefan's up by basically two bingos here uh, he's he's sitting pretty he doesn't need to do anything drastic i actually don't see i haven't spent a lot of time thinking about his letters don't see anything spectacular for him but he doesn't need spectacular at this point he just needs to hold steady um you know try to shut down the board piecemeal 
uh, as he's doing here, and he should be able to just sort of cruise to victory. And Grunt oh does a, a really good job of that, blocks the, the most damaging bingo line on the board, which is eight letter words ending in the T of a vert. Also blocks the O of Toko, and it blocks averts. So it, it, it does give like an R back and a G back for possible eight letter words, but it, it blocks a lot more than it gives. So that's exactly what he wants to do here. Yeah, so, uh, and if you're Stefan, you know, if Chloe's going to bingo, I kind of want her to front hook UTE because that means I'm going to crush that triple word for 40 back and mostly neutralize the bingo anyway. So, you know, he thwacks every line except that one, and that's the one he's least worried about. I love this play of grunt from Stefan. Just take this lead and run with it, block everything you can all at once. And Chloe looks like she's going to play B-I-S underneath Knights. She could also play B-I-S-E-S -S, uh, to make cat houses, which would be uh, style points for sure. But this is the last S in the game that's on her rack right now. And unlocking that grunt to grunt spot, I think, is going to be very important. So as fun as that play is to try to win the game, I think you probably hold the S here. And, uh, wow, she's found her consonants. Um, yeah, gross. Yeah, that, that's not what she wanted, uh, especially when things seem to be looking up for her. Um, but it, it's it's still a better situation than she was in a few turns ago, other than the fact that it, we're a few more turns into the game. It's just closer to being over, and the time to come back is you know running out with each play that gets made. And Stefan now picking up that great blocking V, and he'll have options with it. I think Vim and Meme over. Uh, you can play vamp as well opens up spots if chloe's gonna bingo starting with an o like whatever um, but just make some kind of play front hooking ute with that m you've drawn and uh stefan's got this this has been a very very well played game from stefan so far um you know his rating suggests you'd expect to see a few mistakes from him each game and i don't know that he's made one Fed versus FedEx, I think, is a stylistic decision more than anything else. But Stefan's been nearly automatic in this game, uh, just continuing to make the best play with his racks every turn. Grunt, definitely not the equity play, but a play I love. And if you're counting that as a mistake, I think you ought to reconsider your heuristics in this game quite a bit. Really good stuff from Stefan so far. Yeah, the, I, I agree, Matt. Uh, kind of a flawless effort from Stefan up to this point. Obviously, the tiles help, but he knows what to do with them. He's you know played the right type of play at the right time. He's just doing it again here with Vim, uh, blocking the the letters that go in front of Ute for bingos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, one last ditch effort, I think, for for Chloe here. She does have the case S. And if she plays FOB and OBs right now, OBIS, uh, she could potentially double double with like an EST bingo. So that could be a hundred points, a hundred points for her next turn. Um, probably still too little, too late. Even if you score twenty this turn and a hundred next turn, but one more hail mary that can be thrown out there for her before she throws in the towel on this one, a hundred percent. There it is. Fob. Yep. That, yep, that nice double play. Line. I like it. Nice nice stuff. And we'll see if she's finally rewarded. Although I expect the way she's drawn like O O O or Q P something to come out. Let's see. Stefan Avow just continuing to crush points. And hey, Chloe got a bingo. She even got a <laughs> Yay, she even got her double double. All right. A little consolation prize for Chloe as she drops the list bingo I nanist. Uh That's going to be 87. And at least make yeah, this, this respectable. Yeah, this is exactly what she was hoping to do like seven turns ago or six turns ago. However, I've completely okay. lost track of, you know, the amount of turns that she was struggling. Um, this was supposed to happen a long time ago. It's nice that it happens to her now, but it's she's still a bingo down. Uh, the board is still very unfavorable. So... It's kind of just a, a, a spread-saving play, not really a game-saving play. 
in Scrabble, you're supposed to smile when you bingo, like you're supposed to have fun. And that is not a fun bingo. That is a, uh, a consolation prize bingo if I've ever seen one. So, ugh. and Stefan picks up the second blank just when Chloe maybe had a shot, that blank was going to be crucial to her having any way of getting back into this. And alas, it is on Stefan's rack. So that that's more or less going to be it for this one. Stefan with a big victory over Chloe on uh, round two of this tournament. Yeah, d definitely. He's uh, happy to score that win, um, given what I presume to be the lifetime record, which would uh, be in his daughter's favor. Uh, this is the first step to equalizing. The first of many. See, I'm pulling up the head I'm now between these two. Yeah, I was oh. just going to pull pull up cross tables and see see where things stand. Right, so this is game 16 between the two of them. Lifetime record before this one, Stefan 8, Chloe 7. So he will actually remain in the lead. I guess, Matt, neither of us was taking into account that Chloe started playing Scrabble like as a young girl. She was, I don't think, even 10 years old when she started playing tournaments. And probably every time she faced off her against her dad in those situations, um, the scales were tilted more towards uh, the father than to the daughter. And only recently has that equation changed. So checking this out, you're right. The first, uh, let's see, the first eight games played between these, Chloe's rating was in the 1400s and Stefan's was in the 16 or 1700s. And then sometime between the Albany tournament where Chloe lost to her dad in round one, that was the last day of 2021. And the next time they played, which was not even six months later in June of 2022, Chloe's rating jumped from 1499 to 1800. <laughs> so, uh, something must have happened in there. Wow. Um, and ever since then, Chloe has clearly been uh, the overdog in this matchup. Chloe took five straight over her dad once she hit 1800, but this is going to be three straight wins now for Stefan in the set since then. I'm sure he's uh I'm sure he could rattle that number off from his head immediately. Definitely the kind of stuff he pays attention to. <laughs> uh, all right, man. I, yeah, Stefan can do anything at this point. I would say do something exactly like this. Just pay, make it tougher for overlaps. Don't open anything new that you don't have to. Um, oh my goodness, the unseen pool is absolute garbage. So maybe we wanted to hold that A, but it doesn't really matter. You've got the blank. You've got the lead. Just do something and uh, get out of here and celebrate. Yeah, I think I think he can just, um, you know, keep making sane, logical plays, and he should have nothing to worry about. Pay is exactly that. Uh, so you see the unseen pool on display now. Um, not looking so hot for Chloe and and you know her chances of getting in she's got to worry about that j but also worry about bingo opportunities for stefan once again so just yikes 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 across the board um kelpie is a high scoring play that she'll have making pip and any at the bottom of this board for 41. Um, kelpie will set up joked or joking plays through the k which is unseen stefan doesn't quite have it but I don't think I could pull the trigger on it just because with that unseen pool, if the J is on my opponent's rack, he almost certainly is going to have joked or joking or something like that. And I, I just, I can't give that up on top of everything else that's happened this game. Yeah, that would be the, the ultimate final humiliation to just put the K out there and get smacked once again with a big play. Um, then again, it's it's a lot of points to pass up, and it, it does guarantee Chloe a 300 game, which is a not insignificant milestone for us Scrabble players. There's a psychological hurdle that gets broken down once you reach 300. Hitting 300 always is a little consolation prize in a game where there's very little to feel good about for for Chloe. Not not necessarily that she did anything wrong, except just couldn't hit a fish to save her life. There's Kelpie. It's coming down. She has to know she's going to get hit by joking right now, but she's not. So I guess that's there's her consolation. Yeah, there, there's a bit of consolation here that the 
another worst case scenario didn't befall her as they seemed to um, happen to her this entire game. So a little consolation, it's still going to be a loss, but at least it's not going to be a 200 point loss. Yeah, it ended up being reasonably respectable at the end of this. Um, Stefan is going to do his tracking. Chloe has emptied the bag with that play. Um, so he's got to see that zoned is a possibility through the E in Kelpie and then make sure that zoned does not get played by Chloe. I'm not seeing any other great options for the Z. You just got to make sure that one's taken away. Oh, Quackle, what are you doing? Uh, it's always fun to figure out what Quackle thinks is the best endgame sequence. And uh, this one looks wild to me. Where does that go? Ah, oh, very cool. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to spoil it all, but we'll see if uh, Stefan's able to come up with the best in game here. It's wild. Yeah, definitely. It's not one I would come up with. I, I also have access to the Quackle screen, and um, it's not my strong suit coming up with the crazy end games. Um, I would definitely expect something conventional here, like just playing Jived with a blank B through the E of Kelpie. Just you know, score some points, block the Z spot, and, you know, who cares if you don't go out next turn? Stefan is double-checking his tracking, or perhaps his tracking is off, perhaps he's double-checking, but he is counting everything on the board. I would guess that he sees Jared right now, J-E-R-I-D, through the E, and he's got to make sure that Chloe does indeed have, like, G-O-D-Z on her rack, and he won't get, you know, surprise triple-tripled on or bingoed out on. Uh, we know it's not there, but he wants to take his time, and he's certainly within his right to take his time at the end of a game just to make sure she, he doesn't blow it. Yeah, I think we, we've come across these situations in, in end games before where the end game is won, and we're still seeing an, a player um, double checking their tracking. And uh, I, th I think it's a very reasonable thing to do if you're off to make sure you don't make a game losing play. I think most players can sympathize with the, the desire not to make a game losing play. Um, but when you're on the opposing side of it and you're just kind of waiting for the game to end, yeah, it can be a little tedious, but uh, such is the life of a tournament Scrabble player. A lot of tedium. But we've also got to point out it's 9.30 in Lake George right now, and they've got another game to play yet. So I'm I'm snoozing right now. Uh, I'd be trying to catch a couple Z's before my next game kicks off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I played in the uh, Word Cup in Albany a couple months ago, and the first night of games was a Friday night, three games going until 10 or 10.30. And uh, I blew an end game. I was just so tired. Uh, I was not thinking clearly. Uh, at least that's what I like to blame it on, but I, it's past my bedtime. Um, not operating on all cylinders and uh, lost a game because of it. So uh, fatigue at this time, especially if somebody's just coming off a long day of traveling, it's a very real thing. Absolutely. Hopefully not a big factor in this tournament as it's only 15 games, but especially this first night, uh, maybe so. Although Chloe, I will say, has had two rather thoughtless games an autopilot victory and then an autopilot defeat. So I'm sure there's still tread on the tires in her brain. I'm trying to play with matchups for our next game and already peek ahead because this one's kind of a snoozer. Um, I've heard that we may have to change things up. I think we're going to get some Jackson Smiley for everybody at home. It uh, looks like we've got Jackson versus Jeremy Hall on cue. And that'll be our last game of tonight. Once again, the plan for tomorrow is our four morning games are going to be NWL games. I'll be joined by Jeffrey Pogue. And uh, we'll do a little bit of Division One, I, I think, but also definitely at least two games from Division Two, uh, just to highlight some different characters, show some different levels of play as well. And uh, then tomorrow afternoon, we're hoping to... Uh, we have Austin Shin coming on board, and we would never not do Collins if we have one of the best Collins players on the planet in the booth. So tomorrow afternoon will be CSW play.
Chloe st struggling to stay awake right now. You can see several yawns. Matt struggling to stay awake right now as well. Uh, Stefan does come down with a jiver. So optimal end game there was actually to not play the J at all. Uh, optimal end game was Dryer, D R I E R, through that E to block zoned and holds on a J I blank to play Koji from the K next turn. So Quackle going to do Quackle things and think of that stuff. I'm sure, you know, on a perfect day, I might think of that too. But uh, not, yeah, t today may not be that day with the yawns going on and everything else. Yeah, I, I would be hard pressed to come up with that one myself, especially with a big play. I guess we don't know. I guess that's probably a V for Jiver. Um, with that sitting, you know, staring at me in the face, just you've already won the game. Let's just make the obvious play and get on with it. And uh, Chloe making the the only other good Z play that I saw after zoned was block, which is just the uh, straightforward zoo. Uh, looks pretty good, gets her some more points. And, um, you know, it's, it's as good as she can do, given what she's got. Uh, Stefan is not able to go out this turn, so he's going to have to dink and dunk in this one. But Chloe's going to have to do the same after she uh, rushed that last play. So... Uh, we'll see. We'll see several more plays get made here, but eventually Stefan's going to end up with some number of points and a W. I'm curious to see uh, if there's a shaking of hands at the end of this one. We did see the shaking of hands between Zach and Chloe in the first game. I'm curious if uh, the father-daughter pair is on uh, handshaking terms. Handshake uh, or a hug or a uh, profanity, one of those three likely going to be what we hear here. Uh, we do have overhead audio. We're going to try to test that for you all now, although the post-game banter is going to be nothing but I'm sorry from Stefan if I had to guess. Um, we'll, we'll still cut to that mic, see what we can get for you all as soon as this play, uh, as soon as play is over. So ID for eight. Hey, it looks like they're laughing and smiling and having fun. Uh, you're not supposed to do that when you play Scrabble. No fun. Yeah, that, that's a disgusting display. Uh, yeah. I am horrible. I'm outraged. Director. <laughs> Director, somebody's having fun. Okay, so as soon as Stefan figures out he can play OR for three points, we will cut to overhead mic and uh, go on from there. There it is. Good job, Stefan. 420 and 4. 353, 424. Good game, good game, good game. Uh, I think it's, I don't like it, it doesn't Spike compare. Lit. Like what step like I don't think that's I don't, like Kelpie is. Yeah. yeah. Kelpie or Kelpie is, is good. Kelpie though. is good, but it doesn't compare. Yeah, it's an out. Kelpie. Right. I knew it didn't compare, but I thought it was good, yeah. And Cleave I think is good. Yeah. Cleave is good. Yeah. Cleave is to cut. No, I was Toko, I was holding. <laughs> I know. Uh, thanks. T house. Cat house. That bat house? No, it's just T house, cat house. Um, how is that? I mean, house. ending in house. Ending in house. Tap house. Tap house. Tap house. Tap house. Right. Uh, yeah, this is, this is bad. I don't know. Like, I just have so you many got so vowels. many vowels. So long. And, like, this, I don't know. Like, I was keeping fine every time, and the back just kept getting more and more consonant heavy. So you're like, eventually yeah. you're going to drop the consonants, and you get E E I I N O T five turns in a row. Right. Like, right. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, mine all. I mean, I think it was the second. No, like, I mean, I was scoring. That's the problem. Was I? I, you know, my ranks problem. were good, and yeah, this book is not necessarily great. Like, there's not a ton of stuff that comes after this. I mean, GI. It's not like no. it's not the easiest. I don't know. Like, the question was play A or I know or block like, a spot. I knew you were so, right. I knew you were deciding there. Kept worse. And this, it felt like this could score a lot sometimes. Right. Too. 
Really this just didn't feel like a lot. Of, but you, did you keep two cup vowels? E T. Uh, e -T. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And you just play erotica. Move one more. No, you can't. I don't, uh, I don't see the need. Like, yeah, I don't no see the need either. There's it's, this slot for, like, it's a tie game. I yeah, mean, it's a tie game. There's, there's no point. Yeah. Erotica has hooks. I would say erotica has yeah. hooks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, four two four three five three. Yeah. So I think Chloe putting it as well as any of us could. I don't know. Sometimes you just don't know. Sometimes it just doesn't work, and that's what we saw today. Chloe still able to make it respectable, three five three to four two four. But a big win for the dad in the father daughter matchup as Stefan and Chloe both now one and one.